This is Math 98, Section 10.4. We're going to look at some uh, situations that have been made for us that we could solve using quadratic models. So the first one says the product of two consecutive odd integers. Integers are just numbers that don't have a fractional piece, like negative 5, negative 7, or you know, 10, 11. Um, but these are two consecutive odd integers is 195. And what are they? So we're going to set up an equation for this and solve it. And let me think about this. So I have two consecutive odd integers. So the first one, I'll just call it x. And the second one, well, if, like, if this is 5, this is 7, right? Consecutive odd integers. If this is 11, this is 13. So this must be 2 bigger than that. So this must be x plus 2. Product means multiplication. The product of them... So x times x plus 2 is 195. Now I have an equation to solve. So I just translated this statement from English into math, and now I'm going to solve it. Distribute that x into there, and then let's subtract 195 from both sides. And now I've got this thing to solve. And um, I could run it and I could put it right into quadratic formula. I'm going to try and factor it. It should be factorable, 195. So I'm going to play around with 195 and see uh, if I could get two things that, two factors that add to two. I know five goes into it. Okay, five and 39. Uh, 39 is three times something. So I'm going to take that three and throw it with the five and make a 15. So 195 should be divisible by 15 as well. 13, those are two apart. Yeah, that, that's it. So this will factor then into x plus, was it 15 and 13? I think it was. x minus 13 equals 0. And then now I can say, well, if that's true, uh, x equals negative 15 or it equals positive 13. And now um, my original statement said they're odd integers. Um, and odd at integers can be negative and they can be positive. So my answer is not negative 5, uh, negative 15, and 13. This is two different answer sets. So notice x can be negative 15. So if x is negative 15, and I plug that in for here, that plus 2 is negative 13. So one pair that works is negative 5 and negative 13. And if x is 13, and when x is 13, Two more than that is 15 and 15. So both of these sets, uh, both of these pairs, I should say, work as a solution to that situation. All right, let's take a peek at another one. A triangle's width, the width that belongs to the triangle, is four more than six times its height. Oh my God, I'm going to have to start drawing. So I have a triangle. I'm not really sure what it looks like. Maybe something like this. But its width, I've got its width and I've got its height, right? The height comes straight down from, from there. So the width is four more than six times its height. So let's say the height is h. That means the width is four more than, so four more than six times its height, six times the height. Find the dimensions. Oh, the area is 208 square inches. Area of a triangle is one-half base times height, or one-half width times height. And I know the width in terms of h, so I'm going to let this take the place of that w. So I've got one-half times xh plus 4. That's the width times the height, and the area is 208. Great. Translated into math, I can solve this. Uh, let's distribute that one half into the L. So I've got 3H plus 2. Distribute that H into there. 3H squared plus 2H. I'm going to want this thing equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract 208 from both sides right now. And then I can solve this in a variety of ways. I could try and factor it. I can run it through quadratic formula. I can complete the square. I think um, I'll just run it through quadratic formula. And you know how to do that, so you don't need to, to watch me do that. So I run this through this mysterious cloud that is the quadratic formula, and I get, let's see, h equals uh, 8, or it equals 
negative uh, 8 and 2 thirds. And since uh, I'm not going to have a negative height, I'm going to throw that one out. I'm going to keep the 8. So if the height is 8, I can plug it back in for the width. The width is 6 times the height plus 4. That comes out to 52. So there's the dimensions right there. The height is 8, and this is in inches, and the width is 52 inches. And I could check it, right? 8 times 52, cut that in half, and I get 208. All right, one more example like this. Uh, I've got this pole just standing there with the sun shining, and it casts the shadow. This distance from the tip of the pole to the tip of the shadow is 20 feet. I don't know how they measured it, but that is how long it is. It says the pole's height is three times the length of its shadow, and we're supposed to find the height of the pole. So the shadow, I'll just call it... Uh, I, I want to use S, but they look like 5, so I'll say A. And that means the height is 3A, because it's 3 times the length of a shadow. And then now, well, this is a right triangle. I can use Pythagorean Theorem for this. I can say 3A squared plus A squared is 20 squared. And let's go ahead and solve this out. Uh, 3A squared is 9A squared plus A squared. 20 squared is 400. Feeling good. Add these together. I get 10. A squared is 400. And then from here, uh, divide both sides by 10. A squared equals 40. Square root that. Uh, plus or minus the square root of 40. Since I'm doing a distance here, uh, I'm just going to like do a decimal approximation for that value of 40. I can throw out the negative case because, well, it's a distance. But let's see, square root of 40. About 6.32. And that's really good. I feel good about that. I feel good about my math. But... Uh, if I want the height of the pole, that's my A value, right? That's how long the shadow is. So i got to multiply that by 3 to get the actual height of the pole. So take that, multiply it by 3, I get 18.97 about. So the pole is almost 19 feet tall. All right, uh, give the questions from the problem set a try. Message me with any questions that you have.